of all the marsupials that call Australia home, the sugar glider, like Fidget here, has to be one of the most instantly recognisable to anybody around the world. But it turns out, sugar gliders are actually much more diverse than a lot of people have ever imagined. And in today's video, we're going to introduce you to two new species of sugar glider discovered here in Australia. So for quite a while now, we've known that sugar gliders are relatively diverse. You see, these guys are found all the way from eastern Indonesia through Papua New Guinea, Western Australia, the Northern Territory, and all the way down the East Coast into Victoria and South Australia. And throughout that distribution, we've historically broke them into seven different subspecies. Now in captivity, Australian marsupial keepers have usually broken these guys into Northern sugar gliders and Southern sugar gliders. And basically, it's just based on physical differences, how big they are and how fluffy they are. But it wasn't until 2013 that scientists from Charles Darwin University actually got their hands on some of these northern sugar gliders and did some basic genetic testing. And what they realized is that there was certainly something different. Now over the next few years, this prompted genetic testing into sugar gliders from all over Australia. And what we've since found is that we have not just two species of sugar gliders, the northern and the southern, we've actually got three different species that make up what we now today consider sugar gliders. The first of these new species is that northern sugar glider, the one that scientists first found back in 2013. They discovered is its own genetic species, and they now call that the savannah glider. These guys are smaller than the sugar gliders you think of, like Fidget here. They've got less fur, and they live across that open, dry savannah woodland across Northern Territory, Western Queensland, and parts of Western Australia. The second one is what we basically consider the true sugar glider, and we do this because the type specimen, which is the first one that's recorded by Western Science, which scientists had to go all the way to London, the Natural History Museum, to actually find, is uh, basically now confined to a thin band of coastal forest between the border of New South Wales and Victoria and southeastern Queensland, on the eastern side of the Great Dividing Range. And that leaves the third species as the Crefts Glider, which is found all the way from Queensland through most of New South Wales, pretty well all of Victoria, and pushing westwards into South Australia. So where we used to have one species with a huge distribution, we've now got three different species. Interestingly, this isn't the first time this has actually happened. Back in 2007, the sugar gliders living on the Bayak Islands in western Papua New Guinea or eastern Indonesia were discovered that they weren't just their own subspecies, they were also elevated to species status and are now known as the Bayak glider. So we've got a variety of sugar gliders that are far more diverse than people have first realised. Now on the one hand, while it's terribly exciting to have two new species of sugar glider here in Australia, it does come with some bad news. And that is that, like I said, while we used to have one species with a huge distribution and a stable population, when we start to carve them up, things don't look so good. And already the savannah glider, that northern population, has had a reduction since the 1990s in distribution of about 35%. So things like introduced cats, changed fire regimes, habitat loss, are really impacting these guys. Also, the sugar glider, or the true sugar glider, is now restricted to that thin coastal band throughout New South Wales, basically. And they've got massive issues. Things like bushfires, which have roared through that region in the last few years, as well as urban development. That east coast is where a lot of the major cities in eastern Australia live. So suddenly, they're an animal that we've really got to watch out for as well. The good news, of course, is that we've discovered these guys. And now that we know that they're there, we can work to conserving these three species as the individual populations they are. But what it does serve as is a really great reminder that while an animal might look common and abundant over a wide distribution, we can't afford to take them for granted. We might find out one day that the animal in your backyard is different to the one on the other side of the city or on the other side of the country. And this has actually happened before. In the last few years, we've discovered new species of bandicoots that are already extinct. But at the time that they disappeared, we thought that they were other species. So we don't want to discover animals that are already gone or already on the way out. It's an important example of why we should conserve everything, whether it's common or whether it's not, because the diversity is something that we're only just now, through genetic analysis, getting the ability to grasp. And already here in Australia, we've lost more mammals than any other country on Earth. So the last thing we can afford to do is lose animals that we don't even know about. Fortunately, it's not all doom and gloom. 
While we do have a terrible conservation track record here in Australia, today there is a huge number of people doing their very best to make sure that this trend doesn't continue and that we conserve our species before we lose any more. And hopefully, more and more of you guys, the general public, are able to jump on board and through education have the, the means and ability to do your little part as well. Now, with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the two new members of the Sugar Glider family here in Australia. I certainly find them incredibly interesting. But if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you want to help support our videos come out more regularly and us visit new facilities and show you other animals, consider supporting us on Patreon. It's our Patreon supporters who help us bring these videos to you guys. But between now and next week, be nice to wildlife, even the common wildlife, and uh, I'll see you next week. Have a good one and take care.